Who, uh... Personally, Montclair represents to me where the action is. Montclair, in a large degree, represents, I think, everything that our country is all about. It's a racially integrated community. It's a community that combines not only educational excellence, but cultural achievement at many levels. At the same time, it provides ideal uh, home environment, whether uh, by homeowners or tenant residents uh, in the community. Uh, we also have uh, a number of, of actually five commercial districts within the community where uh, people can shop and have the advantage of local shopping conveniences. In short, it's a place where you can enjoy the total life. Montclair offers so many things to be proud of, it's hard to single out uh, any single examples. Certainly the long tradition of excellence in our public schools is one of the great hallmarks. The fact that for many years the community has been a successfully racially integrated community is equally important. Uh, also there were very important decisions made years ago that have affected the total life of the community so that for instance 8% of our land is dedicated to parkland, such as the park we're standing in today. As a result, the, not only the beauty of the town is enhanced, but also the recreational uh, facilities and opportunities within our community. Uh, culturally, the, the community offers not only its own museum, which since 1914 has provided one of the best collections of American art for any comparably sized community in the nation, but we also have a resident theater company, we have a chamber music society, we have a concert series of national reputation. We have uh, a number of, of, of volunteer or semi-volunteer groups, such as an operetta club that provides musical comedies twice a year, uh, and many more cultural activities. It also is important, I think, and significant that one of the state colleges, Montclair State College, is located within our community and affords educational opportunities not only for our own residents, but for a total of about 8,500 full-time equivalent students uh, who also participate in the community uh, and about a third of the, of the student body lives in the community. In short, the, the, the total mix of activities, um, recreation, cultural, institutional, educational, uh, provide a broad spectrum of, uh, of opportunity uh, for anyone who chooses to find it. I think the fact also that we're located 12 miles from the heart of New York City uh, also provides uh, job opportunities and, and uh, opportunities uh, that would be available from any major uh, central city. I wanted to perform my duty in a normal fashion like any other man performed the duty. But of course your public always look upon it as being something special because you were the first black mayor. But personally, I wanted to, it was my intent that I should perform my duty in a normal fashion like anybody else in a similar capacity. So, and of course to give my very best to it, and which I tried to do the eight years that I was in office. If I looked upon the eight years that I was in office as some of the more exciting years of my life, <laughs> it was exciting, challenging, and perhaps when one serves in a public capacity like this, one of the greatest feelings you can have is when you get something done, the sense of achievement. And in government, with all the red tape from the <laughs> conceiving an idea and getting it actually implemented, sometimes can take a long time, and it's rather frustrating. But it does, when you realize it, it becomes a fact. This can be the most exciting moment in your life is the actual realization of your aims and goals. We had, uh, we had problems of, um, of some racial prejudice and uh, some discrimination in housing and what have you. And uh, we went through those years and uh, I'm pleased to say now, uh, and I can look at it perhaps a little more objective because I have served in, in the office of the mayor and now I'm outside of that position and I can look back at it. We've come some distance. Uh, we had problems with our schools, that is the matter of 
of, of busing and all that. We've come through that. That problem seems to have been settled at the moment. Uh, we had problems in housing, but I'm pleased to say that it's safe to say that in Montclair, if one has the money, he can live just about where he wants to. That has an image, has had an image down through the years of being uh, a town where people come who have some means, uh, people who bring a certain degree of competency and sophistication. And uh, when, that, when they bring that to the town, of course, that becomes a part of the town. And uh, it has always attracted those kind of people down through the years. And uh, the image it has projected, it has maintained that image. Uh, I would say that one who comes to Montclair to live uh, must have in order to live in Montclair, it, it's, it's, it's a bit costly, and one must either be prepared when he comes to have, to, to get jobs that pay well in order to live in a town of this kind, because it is expensive. And um, it is, as I said earlier, it has constantly attracted those kind of people who come, who are prepared to live here. They know what Montclair is like, and therefore they make the decision before coming as whether I can live in this town because of its history, its past performance, its high standards. And they sort of make that judgment before they come here. And so when they come, most of the people continue to add to that kind of perception that the people have of this town. You see. For example, the thing that attracted me to this town when I came here from Columbus, Ohio, I was looking for a town where I could send my children to a good school. See, everybody has, has something that they look for when they come to a place like Montclair. And the education in, in the school system attracted, the standards tr attracted us. This is an ideal place to, to, to rear your children and to educate your children. And this was the, one of the major things that attracted us to come to a town like this. And of course, um, our objective and our goals were realized. We, were, we, we had normal, typical problems like any other school system, but we always were able to work through those problems. And I was, we were quite satisfied that our young people got an education in Montclair. The magnet school concept is, a, is an elementary school concept uh, for the purpose of integration and to provide quality education. Develop a program and you put that program in a building, a site, okay? And then you say to people all over town that this program is there, and this is what this program will do. And if you want your children to participate in this program, then you must send your children to that school, you see? The program is the magnet that draws the kids to it. It's the motivation of the plan uh, came as a result of the district attempting to integrate over a, ser over a period of time, uh, somewhat unsuccessfully. Um, and so we were desirous of a plan that would integrate but not force bus it, and also to um, provide the kind of education that people wanted in the town. Uh, so the motivation was to create an integrated school system with quality education. The plan in itself came about from the community, uh, superintendents, staff, teachers, and the Board of Education that had the foresight, I think, to approve a plan like this. Three magnet school approaches have been tried for the past 15 years. The basic history of them has been total failure, or almost total failure. They have not had a high success rate uh, of working. Uh, to integrate schools. Uh, they have had more benefit uh, in trying out educational ideas than they have for integration purposes, but they've been around for at least 15 years. I think one of the problems with, with the Magna concept as an integration tool uh, is that the large cities that tried it um, has had difficulty with it. 
Montclair, because of its geographic situation, because of the housing pattern that exists in Montclair, it was ideal. Cleveland or Chicago or, or Detroit and some of these large cities have tried magnet programs and it simply doesn't work because the, the, the whole fiscal structure of the town, the population doesn't lend itself to it. I would say from my perspective that the magnet school concept, at least from what I can gather from the community, has been very favorably received. I think that many parents like the opportunity to choose, if you will, or to select courses. People are getting the kind of education that they themselves would like their children to have, okay? Secondly, they are choosing that. They are the selectors of the kind of education that their children receive. Thirdly, um, it provides uh, a kind of competition within the school district that even though those schools who are not magnet schools began to look at their school and to say, gee whiz, let's do something and make our school special too. Uh, so those are some of the, the positive aspects, which means that the total district, the total school system, uh, receives the benefit from the magnet concept being in a district like this. We have looked at uh, the results of the magnet school concept in several ways. Number one is uh, parents seem to be satisfied with the education that their children are getting, and we go about that in a variety of kinds of ways, parental surveys and so forth. We also look at the district from a performance standpoint. We use standardized test scores to look at performance, right? And we do that primarily uh, on a grade level uh, across the district uh, and so forth. What we have not done is that we have not looked at the performance level of the minority students versus the majority students. I think we need to do that. Um, integration primarily, or the desire for integration started because there was a population uh, who was, had, did not have equal access to quality education. Okay? So therefore, we cannot say that we have done our job until we are satisfied that the, those students who it was designed to help are receiving the kind of quality education. It is not necessarily true that simply because they're in the room together that that's happening, and we need to look at that. I think the magnet school concept is very successful, at least in Montclair. Uh, in this particular school, Glenfield, I contribute that in part to the open access that children have to all facets of the curriculum. Uh, being in this type of program, and particularly for minority students, it is very important that the opportunities, opportunities are afforded to all. Um, my racial population in this school is 50-50. Therefore, out of the 40 or 45 courses that we have coming under the Gift and Talent Program, which is part of the Magnus School concept, we have found that the children enjoy those courses very well. Well, I really like it at um, Glenfield. I, this is my third he year here, and I like the way they teach, and I like the integrated system. I think it's nice to come here to Glenfield, and I've been here since last year, and I'm a seventh grader, and the whites and the blacks get along together. They don't call each other names or anything, and the sixth, seventh, and eighth grades get along. And One of the major objectives of any school system is to give young people the academic skills in reading and mathematics and writing that they need to be effective in society. And I, I think we have not always done uh, as good a job as we should for disadvantaged young people, whether disadvantaged because of uh, culture or learning handicapped or what. I think we've made some progress here, and we still, the, the report card is not in on how well we've done. I think the second thing, though, that the report card is beginning to come in on is uh, a major objective of mine in this community, and that is to give young people the skills to get along with each other and appreciate cultural differences uh, or, or just differences, because our community, like our world, has a lot of diversity. I think we've begun to give young people the skills to deal with each other in a much more productive way in our community. As a result, we have also given the adults in our community the skills to get along with each other in a much, much yeah. more uh, 
uh, just a much better way than we were 10 years ago here. Uh, we see people now sitting together in meetings. We see people uh, going to social events together based on the fact that they want to be there. And those skills I see, and I think that report card for this town, for Montclair, uh, is one that they are receiving A pluses on now, the young people as well as, as the community. And that, that has got to also be a goal of an integration plan. People are now proud of the fact that they are citizens of Montclair. They're proud of the fact that the system and the education that the children are receiving is again placing Montclair up there in the forefront of developing uh, education. And that's healthy for the kids, but it's also healthy for the town because it's the citizens that pay for it, and it's expensive. Well, Montclair is not a highly commercial town, as you know. We, uh, it's, it still carries the label of a bedroom community because a goodly number of the people who reside here work elsewhere. You have your people who work in New York, your businessmen, your corporate executives, your Wall Street uh, group. They live here, but they work in New York, and, and you find a goodly number who work in closer cities, surrounding cities like, uh, like uh, Newark, New Jersey. So um, it, it, this still persists. Now, we have light commercials here, and of course, there's a small group of people who are employed locally. My name is John H. Rudd. Uh, I came to Montclair 50 years ago. Our first, our first job here was, uh, was domestic. I got a job doing uh, a butler chauffeur for four years, and uh, after that, I uh, went into the uh, landscape contracting business. And in 1935, I, had, I got my broker's license, and uh, I was still doing the landscaping, and at the same time, I was doing the uh, uh, real estate sales too. For 45 years I've had, I've been a real estate broker. And I'm the, now the, uh, one of the oldest uh, active uh, brokers in Montclair. And uh, over the years I've, I've uh, sold, bought, and uh, built. And I'm the most uh, diversified uh, broker in Montclair. My brother and I, uh, Holland Rudd, he, uh, we are the ones that actually run the business today. We're the other salesmen we have. Uh, my father died when I was 13. I had a wonderful home life. We did, rather, my whole family. And they were very fine people, and that's where I got my real inspiration for my father, which was a great, he had a great ambition, and uh, he was one of the most outstanding farmers in that whole, uh, community, and he was a community leader there. And uh, I got this uh, uh, great urge from him, and uh, which I've tried to carry out which, uh, the plans which I thought that he had. I have uh, received cooperation from the black uh, chamber of commerce as well as the black and white community, because I've, uh, I've tried to cooperate with them. Uh, but I still don't understand, being a southerner, I don't understand their uh, their philosophy in, in segregation and integration here because uh, I noticed that uh, we sell very few. 99% uh, of our sales are with black and uh, but at the same time we have uh, uh, many of our affluent blacks they go and they buy through the white brokers. So uh, I don't understand that but however uh, we have been able to survive and uh, I don't let this worry me. The Southern District is, uh, is uh, the south end of Montclair. It's uh, now, uh, I, when I came here, it was all white section here, and this was called a, a white elephant. And uh, since now the black has owned this and they control it, it's, uh, which is about 98% black business here, and uh, we have no vacancies, very, very seldom we have vacancies here. And it's a very prosperous and a very affluent and a very cooperative uh, section of Montclair. We work together beautifully. We just about have everything. We have uh, the drugstore, we have travel bureau, we have cleaners, we have uh, 
hardware, we have uh, clay cellar, we have uh, uh, vegetable stores, we have uh, paper stores, we have bank, we have cleaners, we have uh, gasoline station, we have beauty parlors, we have it all. So we can, uh, we really don't have to go out to the community and it's all controlled by blacks. My business is insurance. Uh, as you know, uh, as you can see up there, Jesse A. Bell, <laughs> it's a State Farm Insurance Agency. And um, I'm an independent contractor for State Farm. In other words, I'm self-employed. Montclair is unique in a way. Uh, it has uh, a predominantly uh, good middle class and upper middle class black uh, uh, clientele. And um, as far as homeowners are concerned, it has also a uh, abundance of uh, black homeowners in the area. They have been very little problems that I've encountered as being the black businessman in Montclair. Um, I've been dealing with, um, say, an average of uh, blacks, whites, what have you, all types of minorities, and um, I said a heterogeneous type of people, and I think there's a very little problems at all, you know, that exist. The area itself, in, in fact, this particular area in Montclair is uh, somewhat unique. Uh, the dominant uh, businesses here, as you see, are black. Uh, the people themselves do patronize you uh, in the area. And for, one of, for that reason itself, you know, I think that this particular area uh, of Montclair is uh, somewhat uh, unique in, uh, in establishing a business. I think Montclair is a model community for, uh, for blacks or, or, or whites, as far as that's concerned. Uh, that uh, there's places for great opportunities here, and uh, that's if people want to. Uh, but we need cooperation. We need leadership uh, to really develop this town to make it more uh, uh, profitable to all, for all the people. Even though Montclair may look affluent from all outward appearances behind the nice shrubs and the green grass, there are great needs in Montclair. There are poor people in Montclair. There are people who are on welfare who are in Montclair. Uh, and there are over a thousand senior citizens in Montclair who are below the poverty level according to the latest statistics. The Senior Citizen Nutrition Program is a program about people. It's a part of the outreach ministry of our church. The nutrition program deals with people who are 60 years of old and older, who live alone, who are unable to prepare meals, who can't afford to prepare meals, and who need the fellowship of other people their age. The services that are offered to the nutrition program are transportation, recreation, health and welfare counseling, legal services, uh, home delivered meals, nutrition education, uh, diet counseling, eye screening, diabetic screening. Uh, a, a, just a multitude of services will go along with uh, the feeding. It's, it's an attempt to minister to the, to the total needs of the seniors. When we first started this program in 1974, we were told few things. We were told, number one, that we wouldn't get white people to come to this black church. Secondly, we were told that people in Montclair just didn't volunteer. But by the help of God, we were able to just ask people to come and participate. We asked them and they came. So we started with a few volunteers and today we have some 300 volunteers, black and white, 95% of which are over 60 years of age. The program is an excellent idea and has been working out very well here at this particular spot. Uh, the food uh, has been uh, very, very good, and I do appreciate uh, the great uh, contributions that have been made uh, by uh, Pastor Maxwell and by the wonderful volunteers. And uh, I believe that everybody is very grateful for what has been done. Well, I think it has taken about 10 years off my life, and it's the greatest thing since Social uh, Security. I think it's a wonderful thing. I think it should continue, always. For the first time, they are guaranteed a well-balanced meal, each and every one. And the spirit of cooperation here in the fellowship cannot be compared to anything that I've known. 
It's wonderful. I hope it continues. I feel that it's a wonderful program, something we should have had a long time ago, and it uh, is serving the purpose, and I think that everyone here is very much satisfied with it. Uh, I'm happy to be a member of this church and Reverend Maxwell as my minister, that he is heading such a wonderful program and he's doing a wonderful job. I like to eat with other people, too. about Reverend Maxwell this program? Good. Everything's good. I have, I have a special soft spot for the colored people. Well, personally, I'm most proud of the quality of life in Montclair, things like our parks, our recreational facilities, uh, the ability of the people in this town to, to resolve the problems. There, there, is a, there is an underlying, although it's not expressed open a lot of times, there is an underlying determination to solve the problems that exist in Montclair for the betterment of the whole community. I like that. Uh, Montclair is one of our nicest towns in New Jersey. Uh, I've lived here over 25 years, and uh, I like it very much, very much. I like living in Montclair fine because it offers so many opportunities as, a, as far as housing, business opportunities. Well, I like living in Montclair. It's a beautiful town uh, with a very progressive and positive attitude. Uh, we all work together, and uh, if there are ever any problems, we just pull ourselves together, and we accomplish a great deal. I like living in Montclair because Montclair is a beautiful place to live. It affords opportunities educationally and for art. We do need in Montclair opportunities for housing, especially for our senior citizens. We could send more recreational opportunities for our young people, especially in the young adult age bracket, so that they do not have to go to New York or other places. One of the exciting things about Montclair is the fact that many residents have made uh, a long-term commitment to this community. We know from actual statistics that uh, the year before last, two-thirds of all new houses bought in Montclair were purchased by people who already lived in the community. The community, both in terms of its white and black populations, has many families that are third or fourth generation Montclair. I think the thing that's exciting about the town and causes people to stay for such a long time is the fact that uh, in an age of increasing mobility in the population, Montclair is a community that has deep roots and a sense of character and tradition that can't be taken away and can't be found in many other communities.